guys, I'm Tamara Bennett with Southern Adornments Decor, and I'm going to be showing you guys how to create this rusty mason jar kind of look. Isn't this the coolest? It just looks like it's almost like rusted around the edges. It's very rustic and antique kind of looking. So um, we're going to be doing that with this piece here, and then I'm going to be showing you how to do some hand lettering on here without... Um, without a stencil or without um, something printed off the computer. So uh, this is gonna be your own hand lettering and I'm gonna show you how to do it um, in the best way possible so that you get lots of practice writing it out and it comes out exactly like you want and you get it all beautiful before you actually start on your door hanger. So I'm gonna be sharing some tips with you for how to do this rustic mason jar kind of look. Isn't this the coolest? And then we're gonna be doing the lettering. So hang around and it's gonna be really fun. This is a 14 inch size. I don't actually offer this exact size in my shop. We offer six inch, eight inch, 12 inch, and 20 inch. So the closest to this that you could get would be the 12 inch. This is actually 14 inches. Um, it's a special order for my aunt. So if she's watching, hello Kay, she's down in Florida. And um, she has ordered these and I started to do this one and then I was gonna do the second one and I thought, you know what, this would be a great teaching moment because this was pretty intimidating for me to do. I, I normally don't do this type of um, antique sort of look. And so I thought it would be fun to kind of teach you guys how to do it so that, um, you know, you can do it too. So let's get started. I went ahead and this is quarter inch MDF. I have already painted this side with Oyster Beige from Deco Art. That's the kind of paint that I always use. Let me show you. Is it right here? I had the color handy just a moment ago and I set it down. <laughs> I've got it over here somewhere. I'll show you what the bottle looks like. Nope, that's not it either. I don't know where I put it. But anyways, it's Oyster Beige is the name of it. But all of the Deco Art bottles, um, they look like this. They Deco Art Americana. So get the Oyster Beige color. We've already got the Oyster Beige on here. So I'm gonna get, let's see. I need a little bit of this dark chocolate color. So you're gonna need a really dark brown. Maybe a little bit of black. I'm gonna squeeze out about a dime size amount of each. So I've got dark chocolate, a little bit of black. Um, I also need a warm brown to create this sort of rich, warm color right here. Um, I think the color I used last time was, it might have been this burnt sienna color. Burnt sienna. See how warm that is? It's almost a reddish brown. Okay, I'm just squirting these out on a flat piece of egg carton. You can just use a foam plate if you like. Um, and then I'm also going to use this honey brown. It's a lighter lighter color than the burnt sienna. So I've got several colors of brown and one color of black here on my plate. Um, and I think that's going to do it. And then we're gonna be using, let's see, what did I use last time? I think you, I used a um, an angle brush. Here we go. So angle brushes are great for shading. If you don't have any of these, I have a set of angle brushes in my shop um, you can get. You're gonna need a cup of water I've got mine in my trusty little rooster mug <laughs> that I always use. All right, um, you've got your background color painted and you can either use water, which I prefer, or you can use some of this stuff, which I do have in my Amazon affiliate shop. It's called Matte Fluid Medium. This stuff will keep your paint from drying out really quickly. So I'm gonna put a little puddle of it on my egg carton. Um, it takes some getting used to because it makes your paint slippery and it keeps it um, wet longer. And so it keeps your paint more workable and it helps with the shading. So just dip your brush in a little bit of that and then um, get, we're going to just start with, let's see, the lightest, let's see, hang on, we got to think about this a second. I'm going to start with probably the lightest color, which is this honey brown and a little bit of that matte medium. So I've got both on my brush here and we're just going to start in the edge and work our way around. So start at the very edge of your door hanger and just kind of, and you can dip in a little bit of water if your brush feels like it starts to drag and you lose the color, but just start working it around toward the middle. You wanna start on the edge, that way all of that paint um, is darker around the outer edge and lighter toward the middle. The matte medium kind of helps your paint slip 
on the on the surface and helps it stay wetter longer so that you can do some shading. So if you'll notice, I'm continuously dipping back in the paint and back in that matte medium um, to kind of keep doing the shading. So just keep shading it in um, and keep adding a little bit of color and working your way around. <clears throat> So add a little bit more of that matte medium or whatever you need to to keep it workable and just keep working it in. Sometimes I like to add a little bit of water too. It's just that's my preference. I, I like working with the water when I'm shading also. I don't know why. I just do. Um, it's a different feel though. It's wet rather than slippery. Does that make sense? So um, if you're not really good at shading, um, it's not necessarily my strong suit. I don't do a lot of shading, but um, using water or matte medium really does help. So kind of leave it lighter right here in the middle. So on mine, on my original example, it's a little bit streaky, but it is a lighter color right here in the middle. I wanted it to look a little bit streaky on purpose so that it looks like it had a little bit of aging to the jar. And so I'm working that through the middle keeping it a little bit damp so that it doesn't get really dark in any particular spot. And then up here where the lid is at, so I'm gonna work it straight up like this until I get to the top and then I'm gonna go back and forth side to side because you want your lid to start right about there. So, okay, we've got, let me smooth this out. It wasn't looking very smooth. Let me get a little bit of that matte medium because if it looks like it's not very smooth or it looks streaky, that matte medium will kind of loosen up the paint a little bit and help it slide around a little bit better. So do your up and down streaks and then go around the bottom to kind of smooth out where they come down here and around the top. Okay, so this is what we've got going on so far. Not a lot, just a little bit of that honey brown. That was the color we were using. So next I'm going to use um, a little bit of this burnt sienna. I'm using less of it because it's a darker color. I'm not going to get nearly as much. Let's see. We're going to come in about an inch on each side because that outer edge there is going to have the dark, dark brown. And so I'm not going to worry so much about getting it really dark next to the edges. But keep dipping in that matte medium. And kind of just keep going back and forth so you get it the way you want it. Sometimes you have to just keep playing with it. And if it looks like it's too much, because in some places I feel like I've got too much, I'm just going to dab some off on my brush and get a little bit of water. Dab off the excess water and then pull that paint in a different area. Because I got it a little bit thick right through there. Hopefully this is making sense to you guys. What color was this one? It was the Burnt Sienna. Okay, I'm gonna bring just a little bit of that up through here. I, it's just like really watered down on my brush. And I'm gonna water my brush down a little bit more, get a little bit more of it. And if you got too much, just water that brush down a little bit more, dab it off on a paper towel, and just keep going back and forth on it until it thins it out a little bit. And a little bit more over here. It's kind of a process. Like, it, it's, it's a little bit, uh, yeah, the first one was honey brown. The second one was burnt sienna. Okay, so it's a little streaky down here. I'm going to get a little bit more. And kind of work that in. Anywhere that you see that doesn't look like it's got enough, you can go back and add a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit around the top, right up here too, and kind of make it look rounded, kind of like that. And you can add a little bit to the lid if you want. I think I got too much water on my brush. If it's pulling the paint too much, and it's kind of undoing what you just did, <laughs> You may have too much water on your brush. You get a little bit of this matte medium instead of water. I think sometimes the water makes more of a mess than anything, but the, the matte medium does a good job of smoothing it out. 
I'm still kind of getting used to it myself. I haven't used it a lot, but I'm liking it more and more. Okay. We need a little bit of that. I've got to find that oyster brown color because I need some more of it. Is this it? No. Where did I put it? Ah, oyster beige. That was the color we used on the, the base coat. So I'm going to add just a little bit of that to my palette and get just a little bit of honey brown and mix with it and then add just a little bit right to the center here and thin it, thin it out with the, the matte medium. I don't want it to be like a real harsh, harsh difference where it starts and where it stops. I want it to be more subtle. Just get a little bit of water. Just keep working with it till it looks like it's starting to disappear a little bit, that harsh line. Okay, that's looking a little better. Sometimes you it's kind of, sometimes you just gotta know when to quit playing with it, and I have a hard time doing that. So, all right. The base color was oyster beige, and then we added a little bit of honey brown and then burnt sienna. So now let's start with a let's move to a darker color. The the uh, what is it called? Dark chocolate. I'm gonna get a little bit of that matte medium and a little bit of that dark chocolate paint on my brush, and just start going around the outer edge here. And then I'm gonna dip more in the matte medium. I almost think it would be better if you lay down a layer of the matte medium on your door hanger. Let's try that. And then add the paint on top of it. That might help if you're not sure how much matte medium to use. Put the matte medium down on your door hanger first, kind of as a base. And then while it's still wet, add your color on top of it. Try that. That might make it simpler to decide how much to use. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I need some more of the matte medium. I'm gonna kinda draw some lines here on my mason jar. I want the mason jar to kinda look like it's got the... So far I'm only using an angle brush, in case you guys were wondering, just an angle brush. Um, just keep working it in and kinda make it look like it's got the ripples at the top of the glass. Okay, I'm gonna dip in this matte medium again, and it's a little bit harsh over here in this side, so I'm just gonna kind of pull that paint on around. I'm not adding any more paint right now, I'm just dipping in the matte medium and pulling the paint I already have on here to different areas. So you can keep shading that on into the middle and like thinning it out with the matte medium as you go toward the middle. Okay, I think we need some more brown down here at the bottom, so I'm gonna add some more medium and then get a little bit of this dark chocolate. And we're just gonna keep darkening it up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Get a little bit of this lighter oyster beige and blend it in. So the problem with adding a little bit of the lighter paint on top of the darker paint is sometimes it doesn't look the same as it did before. So just be careful with doing that because um, it looks different once you put it on top of the paint than it does shining through the bottom of the paint. Does that make sense? Okay, we're gonna just lightly get a little bit of this and just smooth over the whole area up here to kind of darken it up. I don't have any paint on my brush, just the matte medium. Okay, now I'm gonna take, I've got my dark chocolate here and my black here. I'm gonna get just a little bit of the black on the corner of my brush and I'm gonna mix it with just a little of the dark chocolate to create a really dark, dark brown. And get some matte medium and I'm gonna go around the outside edge. That looks good. Sorry, sometimes I surprise myself and then I start complimenting myself <laughs> because I didn't, sometimes I don't expect it to look that good and then I'm like, oh wow, that does look good. And 
mixing a little bit more. It's almost black, but not quite. It's more of like a brown black. And then add that in. This creates that really antique kind of look. Now, if you feel like you're just pushing your paint around and it's not really sticking to anything, it's probably because you've got too much of that matte medium. I'm having a little bit of that trouble now, and so I'm trying to like get less of it and just use what's already on the door hanger. Now I'm taking just a little bit of it and kind of streaking it in up here around the lid. And get a little bit of that honey brown too. Now I feel like I need a little bit more matte medium. When it feels like it's not streaking anymore, when it's just dragging that paint, you might need a little bit more if it's not shading quite like it was. So now I'm not getting any more paint. I'm just using the matte medium to kind of move the paint that's already on there and blend it a little bit better. Okay, now I do need a little bit more of the dark, dark, dark chocolate. I'm just using the very tip corner of that angle brush and kind of pulling it to create those lines in the lid. There we go. All right, it's looking pretty good. Let me get a little bit more of the matte medium and do. So I'm kind of going into the jar just a little bit more. Bring that shadowing. Oh, that's too much. Let's try moving some over here to this side. So I just have leftover paint on my brush that I'm just kind of blending in now. I accidentally moved some of that paint down there. And I didn't like that. So just keep streaking it in. Sometimes it's hard not to move the paint. If you get too much matte medium, you'll find your paint sliding all over the place. So it takes like a little bit of finesse and a little bit of um, practice to get the right amount going. If you already have plenty on your door hanger and then you add more, then you'll have that problem right there where the paint just slides around. And then you have to add in more paint to compensate. So just keep working with it. So you get it like you want it. Okay, they look pretty similar if we put them side by side. Um, lovely, this is not cardboard, it is um, quarter inch MDF. I sell these blanks in my shop. Okay, it doesn't quite look as dark as the other one, so I'm adding in a little bit more of that blackish brown color kind of darken up some of these edges. And then I'm comparing the two because I wanted them to look just alike. So they don't have to look exactly alike, but pretty close. Okay. I'm going to rinse out my brush because I got a lot going on in there. Now with just my damp brush, and a little bit of this oyster beige and honey brown. I'm going to go back and see if I can kind of lighten up a couple of areas that I got too much. Ah! Let me dampen my brush a little bit more. There we go. Okay. I'm trying to look at it from different angles because the way the light is shining on it, it's hard to tell at some points. All right, I'm gonna try mixing just a little bit of my, just keep playing with it, that's the thing. I'm mixing a little bit of oyster beige and dark chocolate together. So it's the background color and then the dark brown together. And then I'm gonna dampen it with water. So I'm kind of watering it down just a little bit. And I'm gonna add a little bit of that right in here. You can also mix this matte medium directly with uh, your paint. 
if you don't want to like dip in the matte medium and then dip in the paint, you can mix it with your paint, however you want to do it. Okay. Okay, so this is tracing paper. You guys all know what that is. You're going to lay that right on top of your door hanger. And the reason you want to use the tracing paper is because you know how when you're trying to write out your lettering, if we were to just take a pencil and write our lettering out on here, we might not get it centered. We might do parts of it too big. Um, we might um, like get some of it off center a little bit, and then we might have to do a lot of erasing. And so to keep that simple, so that we're not having to do a lot of erasing, and you wanna have a pink eraser nearby, so we don't have to do a ton of erasing on our actual door hanger because sometimes uh, your pencil marks don't erase off of here very well. We're gonna use our tracing paper. Um, so the lettering that she wanted on it, she wanted the words, home is where life begins and love never ends. So I'm gonna write the word home a little bit bigger up toward the top. Let me think, okay, home can go like right up here. We could even draw lines on here if that helps you. So home's gonna go up here is where can go right here. I'm creating kind of blocks for my lettering. Um, life begins can go right here and love right there and then never ends can go down here. So I'm kind of creating sections for where my lettering is gonna go. So I want home, sorry, my phone is dinging. Um, I'm gonna write home right up here a little larger. And so if I mess this up, or if I don't like, I don't like that already. <laughs> I may want to make my letters wider so I can erase really easily. And I want to add serifs. Serifs are the little things on the ends of your letters. So I'm writing the word home up here. This is the best way to kind of like use your own hand lettering and to be able to write it and rewrite it however you want to do it. So if, if I had written that on the actual door hanger and it was off center, I wouldn't be able to move it. But because it's on uh, tracing paper, I can kind of slide the tracing paper back and forth to get it lined up and centered however I want it. Okay, and then we're gonna write is where in cursive or script. And so, Writing this out, sometimes it's difficult to get the sizing of your lettering right. Sometimes your lettering may look too small. Sometimes it may look too big. So, okay, perfect example right here. So I accidentally wrote this just a little bit too far over to this side. So I can either erase it and rewrite it, but I kind of like the way it looks. I like the lettering. So you could even add like a cute, like in the original example, it's got a cute little swirly thing like right here. So we could add that onto the E and make it look like the E curves out to take up that extra space. So I'm gonna curve my E. Okay, so to fill in that space there, I added a little curly. But if you wanted to, after you get all this written out, you could cut your tracing paper into sections and slide the different parts around. Okay, and then you would have to tape it all together to hold it together. And then we're gonna write life a little bit bigger, life begins. And I'm gonna do kind of a, fan, uh, no, I don't know, we'll just see. I may do like a, a whimsical looking L. And then after I get all of this written out, I'm gonna trace it with um, Sharpie so you guys can see it and I can see it a little better. Life begins. So I'm going to write this, the life begins in a little bit of a fancier lettering with like, it's still print, but it's got some curly cues. So it's a little bit whimsical. And I'm bringing my S down and making it a little bit bigger. So it's getting whimsical. Okay, and now I'm gonna write and, but I'm gonna write it kind of smaller. Um, hang on, okay. Yeah, let's write, I was gonna do it in, in script, but then I think I've decided now I wanna do it in print. So and is up here and it's a little smaller. And then I'm gonna do love in cursive.
like that. So it takes up a larger space. And then never ends, we'll do it in um, kind of like we did this lettering where it's got a little bit of curly cues to it. Never. So I don't have curly cues on every letter, but I do on some of them. Okay. All right, so let me show you what, what the lettering looks like. Can you guys see that? So I sectioned it off by drawing lines because I knew how many lines of lettering I had. And by doing that, that allowed me to make sure I had space down here for the rest of my lettering. So I didn't run out of space on the way down. Okay, so now at this point, after you've got it written out, if you like the way it looks, keep it like this. If you don't, you could cut parts of it apart, tape it, move it around. But the next thing I'm gonna do is trace it with a Sharpie. I am just simply tracing this with a Sharpie right now so it's easier to see. Now the cool thing about this is, is after you write this out, you can reuse this over and over again. So the smart thing would be to save it in case you get, like if you're selling these, so in case you get another order for one of these, you wouldn't be have to reinvent the wheel every time. You would already have your template from the last time you did it. That wasn't very smooth. <laughs> When you're doing whimsical letters kind of like this, it's fun to have some of the letters be just a little larger than normal and kind of bounce the letters up and down so that they're not all sitting on one flat line. So the G here, I bounced up a little higher than normal. And then the S, I made a little bigger than usual. Oops, I just got my arm on that and it's got wet paint on it. I think it's almost dry, but didn't want to take any chances. So if you need um, graphite paper or any of the things like that that we're using today, if you um, commented on this video, more than likely you received a message in your Facebook Messenger that will ask you um, if you want a copy of my free ebook or if you want uh, to be notified next time I go live. And so, um, actually, I can't send out the live notifications right now just because something's going on with that system and it's shutting people's Facebook pages down that are sending out notifications. So if you'll notice, I did not send out a notification today, but it will also ask you um, if you need any resources like my Amazon affiliate shop and stuff like that. So now is where you use your graphite paper. This is a rather small piece of graphite paper. I have some in my Amazon affiliate shop that is much larger for big door hangers, but this size was perfect for what I'm doing right now. Okay, do I have any tape over here? Let me get some tape. I gotta show you what, I'm, what, what, what you need to do. So you just need a piece of scotch tape. And the reason you need the scotch tape is because, look here, if I pick this up and I put my, my graphite paper down and then I set this on top of it, I might not be able to see where the edges of my door hanger end and then I'll have a hard time getting it aligned. So the best thing to do, because this tracing paper is see-through, is to get it lined up exactly like you want it first. Make sure it's straight, make sure your lettering looks straight. And then just put down a piece of tape. That tape's not gonna hurt it. A little bit of piece of tape. And then you're going to swing it up like a hinge. Put your graphite paper underneath and then swing it back down. Now all you have to do is take a pen, a little ballpoint pen, and you're just going to trace right over the top of your lettering one more time. I think by adding the Sharpie it makes it easier to see your lettering and um, if you keep this stencil and reuse it over and over again, it makes it to where you can see better the lines that you created because once you start drawing over it with a pen like this to trace everything, you might not be able to see where your original lines were. So the Sharpie kind of 
makes those easier to see. So I'm just tracing everything one good time. And this is actually pushing the graphite that's on the bottom side of the graphite paper onto the door hanger and it's writing it on the wood for me. You have your hand lettering on the graphite paper. Um, it's on the graph, the hand lettering is not on the graphite paper, it's on the tracing paper on top. If you wrote it on the graphite paper, you would not be able to see through the graphite paper to make sure it's aligned in the way you want it on your door hanger. So that's why it's important to use the tracing paper and write it on there. Now when I actually go to paint this on, I will thicken up my down strokes and stuff like that and it's going to look even better than it does right here. This is just the basic outline of the letter. Letters. And you can use um, paint pens with this. You don't have to use uh, a paint brush if you don't want to. I may actually use a paint pen so that I can kind of demonstrate to you what I'm talking about because I normally teach with paint brushes instead of paint pens, but I think paint pens would be easier for those of you who are um, beginners. Okay, so we've got everything traced. Let's take the tape off, set it aside, pull this up, set it aside. Now look at this. Our lettering is perfectly drawn on there and all we have to do is go over it with a paint pen. So I've got my black Uniposca paint pen. I have these in my Amazon affiliate shop if you want it. Just leave a comment down below. Um, is tracing like wax paper? Yes, but it doesn't have any wax. Parchment paper probably, but parchment paper probably isn't as thin as transfer paper, but you can always try that. That's smart. So these are the Uniposca paint pens. If you leave a comment below, it'll send a link to my Amazon affiliate shop to your Facebook Messenger so you can go and get some. This size is the two and a half millimeter size. Um, so make sure you get the right ones. And so I'm just going to trace my lettering with the paint pen and we're going to add like thicker strokes in some places. But first let's get the entire thing traced and then we'll go back and add, um, make it a little thicker in some places. Super simple. It feels like I'm writing with a Sharpie. This is where the E kind of continues on over here to take up extra space and look cute. Okay, let me rotate this and just thicken that line just a little bit because I kind of got off the line just a tad, but it's okay. Do these paint pens clog up? Marilyn, I've had these for quite a while and they've never clogged up on me. They're the best. Is it better to start with a paint pen or just learn right off the bat with a brush? Either way, Janie, um, I like both. Um, it just looks slightly different with a brush than it does with a paint pen. Um, if you're a beginner, I would just start with a paint pen. That way, you know, you're not struggling right off the bat because the brush is harder. But as you become more confident with a brush in your hand, the brush will get easier for you. Hope that makes sense. Somebody said it was therapeutic to watch me do this. I feel like it's therapeutic to do it. Like I feel very relaxed doing this. 
and I love the end result. It's very satisfying. Using my own hand lettering sometimes, especially with this many words on something, is very intimidating. Because um, you're afraid you're going to mess up. You're afraid that your lettering is not going to be lined up right or it's going to be crooked or off-center. And so doing it like this kind of takes all of that worry out of it. Okay, so now that we've got the whole thing traced, let me make sure it's nice and dry. And then we're going to go back and thicken up some of our downstrokes and make some of it look a little bit more like um, calligraphy. I don't want to get my arm in it and then make a mess of it. Maybe I should just hit it with the hair dryer real quick. I just blew my stencil right off the edge of the table. Whoops. All right, so now we can go back and we can thicken up some of this. I want to thicken up the, eight, the letters up here to make them more bold. So I'm just going to kind of go over them again, but slightly off the line so slightly wider it's almost like double the pen width i just want to feel a little bit more sturdy and then on my script hand lettering i'm just going to make the down strokes where my pen would or my brush would naturally curve down i'm going to make those about double the width So like this E right here, if I go double the width on the outside of the E, it's going to bump into the H. So I'm going to go on the inside of the E on the instead so that I don't touch that H. Because I don't want my letters to look like they're running together. And you can even do a downstroke like on the little curly Q over here. Make it a little bit wider. Um... I'm going to see how it looks if I just do the downstrokes of this whimsical lettering. Okay, so then on this L, I'm going to go quite a bit wider than the original. It's like one and a half or two widths wide. And then let's see, this would naturally be a downstroke. And then this. And then here. Here. The more you do it, the easier it gets. You get used to kind of where to put those those lines and strokes so that made that word love look so much better i'm just thickening up and cleaning up the lines on these whimsical letters just a little bit not a lot kind of squaring off the ends of some of these letters, like the D that ends in a point. I'm kind of squaring that off just a little bit at the bottoms. Okay, let me show you what it looks like up close. I've got a little spot right here where the graphite paper accidentally made a mark. So you can always take a pink eraser and kind of erase those little areas where you have unwanted pencil lead. Um, and then after your paint pen dries, if there's anywhere you have pencil lead showing underneath um, where maybe you didn't stay on the lines just right while you were writing your letters. You can go back and kind of erase those little areas too. Oop, I just streaked my paint pen right across there too. Okay, so here we go. And that was really simple using our um, tracing paper. Any word on when Painters Clubhouse will open next in spring of 2020? 
Missy said, I feel like that would be so much more difficult with a paintbrush. It would be. With this many letters, letters, yes, it would be. Now, if we were only writing the word welcome or just the word love, it would be much simpler with a paintbrush. But with this many words, a paint pen's going to save you a lot of headache. <laughs> It is a Uniposca paint pen, Lisa. Go to my Amazon affiliate shop. You'll have a link in your Facebook Messenger since you left a comment. And um, it will, you can go and click over from there and find the supplies that you need. Um, okay, I'm glad you guys like it. I will take a picture of it and post it in the comments in just a few minutes so you can see what it looks like, not in reverse. Um, thank you guys for joining me. If you want to learn how to do this rustic um, style, Go back to the beginning of the video. I did this at the beginning and the lettering at the end. I will see you guys again next time. Bye, y'all.